Hi folks, this is Kev Mac eighteen eighty two. Welcome to a video about the FM twenty new features. So yesterday, the at football manager Twitter account made a off the cuff comment against or in response to one of the posts by someone in the community, um, and it basically alluded to the fact that they were going to announce things at some point today. Miles has already mentioned this probably. I don't know, a week or two ago, saying that near the end of September they would start to announce some of the new features. And also, another thing that I want to go through is today, and I don't know whether it's going to continue in the coming week, weeks, months, or whatever before the, the game actually gets released, is that Miles is doing a roulette of some sort that says, here's a list of features, you know, tell me what you want to see. So you get to vote on Twitter. And I'll go through that in after I've gone through the actual features that are on the Football Manager website that we're looking at at the moment. So without further ado, let's just have a quick brief overview to see what there is. So there's a change to the Development Center. Oh, actually, let's go back because that's the one of the actual specific things. So yeah, we've got Development Center. We've got Club Vision, Graphic Improvements, backroom staff playing time pathway so obviously this is not everything that's been announced because as i said the roulette is still go ongoing with miles si this today is friday 20th of september just in case you are watching this in the future so let's just go through each one of these items that i've just mentioned first off is the Dev development center one of the most engaging aspects of football manager is developing talent and unearthing wonder kids so for me, that is everything that FM is about. It's all about getting the youth intake and seeing what you can do with them. It's so disheartening when you get a youth intake that basically has no one worthwhile keeping or like trying to progress and move on. So it's an all-encompassing hub which you can use to track the progress of your players. It sits on the sidebar in place in place of the sections that previously existed for your youth reserve. And development so it's it's new but it's a replacement so it's you know it's one of those things that you know is it better I don't know once we get the actual game then we can have a look at it so let's have a look what we've got here so this thing shows first team candidates so I'm guessing that you can actually assign different roles or what you expect them to come to um, or to become once you um once you've developed them so and then you can see like they've bit they've added little pretty things like the progress bars so these two have really shot up in the past I don't know, month or year or whatever it is about and obviously you can go on your second team under 19 etc and also i think we'll see in a second you can actually check out on the players that you have out on loan so that you can say to them that you know you're not giving them enough time because always that's a feature that is in the game at the moment, but it's just that it comes through as a news item and you say, you know, what's going on? Why aren't you playing them in the position or you're not giving them enough game time, etc. It's one of those things. So this way you can see the top line information on the state of the youth team and noteworthy talents. So it is just basically an easy place for you to look at your actual new gens or youth team or whatever you want to call it yeah, and your backroom staff will provide recommendations and advice on these players including advice from some of the new staff roles in fm20 and all of the this advice is accessible and actionable from the overview screen that's quite interesting let's just have a quick click was that one of the items that was probably one of the items so i'll go back to that in a minute let's have a look so this is where we can see uh, players on loan so you can see playing regularly enough for us to be happy happy with the loan spell overall so it's going to give you more information in somewhere that you can actually click on them and see what's going on with them which is really good you know for me that's one of the main things because obviously you know the youth team you want to loan them out to make sure they get game time because you're not always going to have the opportunity to play them enough and then we have here is the youth candidates. So this is the youth intake report. So again, as I said, most important thing for FM20, in my opinion, is to have something like this that has more information or as much information as possible. 
Um, obviously, you can get this on the other screens, but I'm guessing they thought it would be more worthwhile to have somewhere specific for you to actually look at the guys. And what else have we got? So the development center will also offer a preview of yeah, your, your yearly intake. So that's basically what I've just gone through. When your youth intake does arrive, you can view individual reports. So again, it's something similar to what you can actually do at the moment. And then what it looks like is that we can actually, as a manager, can control the second teams to say, this is what I want you to do. Instead of you just saying, you know, go and do what I'm doing at the moment in the first team. So you can actually change things about, I mean, you know, maybe with the thought in mind that you have a youth player that's gonna come through, he's gonna be that good that you're going to change your formation or anything like that, or, you know, it gives you the ability to change your formation. So I think it's a good thing, definitely a good thing because you need to make sure that you're, um, you know, you're developing them in the right way. Also incorporates manager, management options for your youth and reserve squads. I mean, I think everyone's been asking for things like this because they've always been talking about, you know, you don't really have much control over the youth other than just saying, you know, play these guys and they could be playing them in any position. You just wouldn't know what they were going to do. Final tab in the development center is the staff drop down menu. From within this menu, you can see your youth coaching, scouting and medical teams. Just like on the staff section of the sidebar, you're able to view the strength of your youth staff compared to your competitors. So it's pretty much simple, uh, or as simple as what you've got today. Alongside with our new additions, such as Club Vision and Playing Time, we're gonna get there. Next up is Club Vision. Meeting the expectations of the board has always been one of your key tasks in Football Manager, but for FM20, we've overhauled the entire back boardroom experience to make it more unique to each team and tied into long-term progression of the club. In FM20, we're introducing Club Vision, which will have far-reaching impact that goes far beyond the boardroom. So let's have a little, a little look at the picture that they've done. The board recognised that it is too soon to pass judgment on working towards the club vision and be and are prepared to wait accordingly. So this is this what it's saying. I mean, if this is what you go into from the get go, or this is what you know you can look at, it's um it is giving you more information. And I think you know when you say to them that these are the philosophies that I've got, you need to be able to see how they how you're faring rather than just have the I don't know monthly or bi-monthly or whatever it is where you receive the information to say whether they're happy or not. So I think that, again, is another good move just purely because if you're managing someone who's a top team or something and you said, I'm going to sign excellent youth players and you've signed only players who are ancient, then it's not going to be a good thing, is it? And it should highlight it in here somewhere. Let's see. So... Club vision is split into three strands that form your club's vision, club culture, ongoing objectives, and your club's five-year plan. So again, five-year plan is something really good. At least if you said, and I'm gonna sign youth players for the future and as part of your five-year plan, at least it gives you time to buy players that are ready now and then wait a couple of seasons and buy players that will be ready. So at least, you know, it gives you an opportunity to do something different rather than just saying, I'm going to sign youth players. If you, and then if you don't sign them, they just get rid of you. So it is important that you've got that, I don't know, that like fallback point that you've got is that it's in my five year plan. I'm going to do it next year or in a couple of years. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to make sure that the team is stable within the league now and then go from there. It's a good thing. Ongoing object objectives are tasks that will, you will be expected to stick to during your tenure as manager. These objectives are ingrained into the identity of the club. So for example, if your club has a long-standing tradition of bringing players through the youth system, then it will be up to you as manager to maintain that. So again, this is new objectives. It's actually showing for the vision. And this is actually a meeting. So I'm guessing it's part of when you actually sign up to the team or when you do something, maybe when you get a new contract or something like that, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's, um, it is interesting. I mean, the five-year plan here, you can see 
end of 21-22, reach the Skybet League One playoffs. By 24-25, win promotion to the championship. So you've got a, a, probably a, a realistic goal rather than them just saying, you need promotion and you need to get in the Skybet championship as soon as possible. So, yeah, I'm really happy with that. I mean, you know, for a five-year plan for the likes of, I don't know, Liverpool, who I manage quite a lot, I'm going to try not to manage them. Um, then I've got a plan on who to manage at the moment, which I will reveal in another video. But yeah, the, the likes of Liverpool, it's going to just be something simple, like win the Champions League, win the league. The five-year plan for someone like that, would it be interesting? I don't know. But I think it's a good thing, especially if you're a lower league team. Name what we got. What you, what you become known for as a manager can have a, also have a bearing on your appeal to club boards across FM20. For instance, if you've honed a particular attacking style of football at a club, you'll be known for that around the world, which could make you more appealing to a board that has playing style included as part of their club vision. So that's a good thing. But it can also be a problem. I mean, if you play like Park the Bus or something like Jose Mourinho and you go to someone who plays attacking football or wants you to play attacking football, then obviously, will that hinder you? I just don't know. We don't know how it's going to play out in the actual game. I mean, it could be something that it actually says that it's going to have an impact, but it may not actually have an impact. So, you know, that again is one of those things that it sounds good, but you just don't know. I mean, it would be good in a sense if you were at a lower league team and you were just playing attacking football, attacking football, attacking football, and one of the top teams said, do you want to join us because you play attacking football? Then obviously that is a good thing or a really good thing in my opinion. Then Club Vision will, be fa will first be presented to you in the new welcoming meeting. So again, we still have that meeting. For me, that is one of the most boring things of the game at the current stage and I hope that it really does get overhauled as much as possible but we shall see. The vision has been added to the board competence module as well which itself has been revamped to become performance for FN20. Visions form part of a report card that is both in a monthly performance update that is delivered to, you, to your inbox and on the performance overview which is visible at any time in the board, board sidebar. Oh. Yeah, we're going to get crap tons of information thrown at us. Next up is graphic improvements. Always welcome. Obviously, if you've got someone who, or if you're someone who's on a budget and you haven't got a decent computer, then it's not going to really affect you because you're going to blow things down. Let's kick off by taking a look at differences in players and textures. Okay. Human models this year represents a significant upgrade from FN19. We reworked the base model to make it more lifelike with more depth and than in previous years. Yeah, I mean it looks good. I would have liked to have had like a comparison to show this is what it's like, this is or this is what it is like in FM19, this is what it's like in FM20. That would be really good for me. Then we've got pictures. I mean that looks great. The stadiums in FM19, you don't even really pay much attention to. What I like though, sometimes is that when you can see the um, the like the manager and things standing up, that's a really good thing. And obviously, because you can change your manager to how you desire, then it's great. Is there any difference between that and that? Ah, okay, a dry grass pitch in FM20, and then you have a damp grass oh it's a, a darker shade of green which is good you know something different you know, you're not looking at the same thing over and over I, i'm with it not going to impact the game too much though then we've got backroom staff which is what i clicked on before and obviously i shouldn't have one of the ways that football manager continues to replicate the world of football with such accuracy is our huge network of help from people who work in the real football world from improved advice and feedback to new roles altogether in FM20, you'll have more support available to you from your staff than before. So in FM19 at the moment, you have some of the staff that you actually, you take on that I don't think they do enough. So the likes of the data analyst. For me, it's one of the worst roles I've ever seen in my life and it just doesn't do it for me. 
it's one of those things that I could take it or leave it. You just hire them. You just say, have a look at the stats and hire the best one. But for me, they don't really do enough. And hopefully that's what's going to come through with these things. As part of the, your pre-match news flow, you will receive an inbox message informing you of your backroom team's advice on who you should pick in your matchday squad. You, you can kind of get that anyway. You just click pick uh, or also pick or whatever and it'll tell you who you want. So this advice takes into account a range of information from form, role suitability, player ability and relevant information on all players in your proposed starting 11. You know, it's a good thing. As much information as you can get, as long as it's in a certain format and also it's not it's not too big, it's not like cumbersome or anything like that, you know, I'm happy with because obviously, you know, if you've got a player who's like, you know, when you have a look at the team at the moment, if you see someone who says that he's tired or whatever, you generally wouldn't pick him just because he's not going to see out the 90 minutes and obviously you're going to have to take him off at some point. So if you can give if they can give you more information about things like that, then obviously it would be good. So just a quick look. Team selection advice. So this is basically telling you what he thinks we should do. Good in position. Good in position. Looks in great shape. Good in roll. Blair. Uh, movement. There's no, I would hope that there is more than just those ones because that just looks like, yeah, just something to fill in the, uh, fill in the gaps. And then... Team selection advice, and this is it. Looks like this is who they're suggesting to swap to. Yep. Okay. So that's who, or oh, that's who they had, had advised. Because in here we had, where are we? Joe Piggott. And here we've picked, or they've picked Michael Felivi. Okay. It's interesting. It's something, you know, it gives you more options to decide who you should actually pick. And I, I'm I'm down with that. Um, especially if they can give you enough information as to say why, rather than just good in role and things like that. It's just, you know, it is things like that that you need more information about. Team selection advice is also available to you at any time on the tactics screen. Just hit the selection advice. Again, you can just pick... You can just do quick pick and FM19. It doesn't really tell you why. It just gives you the, um, you know, it just gives you the team that they would play. If you click on this one, this is basically what they, what I've just said. But you can have a look at it. So we've got Sar, high positive influence, Ismail, Ismaili Sar will frequently cut inside with his ball in space. Yeah, okay. High positive influence, Danny Welbeck. I think that's a lie. <laughs> But I'm biased. It's not just improved team selection advice that is new to the FM20. We've also tweaked advice across the game. One such example is how we've improved the ability to select any square on the tactics pitch, bringing up more detailed analysis on what factors are influencing your strength. Ah, okay. So basically, that's what this one is. If I click on that square, it tells me why you're having such a good impact on it. And hopefully, if you click on these things, it will tell you. I mean, when you have a look at the likes of this this actual picture in FM19 or maybe FM18, whatever one it was in, whatever one it was. If you play 442, it basically gave you it basically gave you the best overall coverage of all of the positions. And 442, because of my age and when I started watching football more and more, it's um it's the formation that I like, but I've kind of drifted towards the way Liverpool are playing at the moment. With their um four three three or four one two two one or whatever it is you want to call it, so yeah, it's it does give you more like insight into why or and um, what's driving the different things, which is good. FM twenty brought responsibilities to four across many more areas of the game. You'll now have the ability to change your responsibility settings from within several news items relating to various areas of the game. That's a good thing for me. Sometimes if I'm just looking through something and or it's something that keeps popping up and I think I'm going to change that to be the assistant manager at some point, I'll forget about it and it'll come up again and I'll think the same thing and I'll just keep doing the same. I'll, you know, It'll go round and round. But if it's got something that is there in front of you at the time of actually seeing the item, then obviously you can change it at that time. 
I'm more for that. And part of the problem is that some of the things that you have responsibility for normally don't have enough of an impact, so kind of skip it. Like the the pre match meeting or whatever it's called, that thing is um I generally just say leave it to the assistant. Even if I've got the worst assistant in the world, I still do that. I don't think it has enough of an impact for me to not actually go in and do it myself. So hopefully things will uh, improve in that way. So playing time pathway, and this is something that is going to go hand in hand with our development center from what I've just read. And I think something that will be really important. Football Manager 2020 has redefined and re-envisioned player development, an aspect of the game that is high on the priority, li priority list of every player. Becoming a manager gives you the chance to carefully control over how you bring through talent while overseeing the progress of your important players too. So this is like your normal screen with your um, like your pro or your, not the normal screen. This is like the um, because this is part of the new contract negotiations. But this is like your normal screen that you have a look at when you look at reports or whatever it's called, whatever it's called. Can't think off the top of my head. But at least it gives you more insight into what type of player it is. Like sometimes, you know, dressing room, Delafeu tends to be a peripheral figure in the squad. If you want a team that's going to gel together and be together, he's not going to be the person that you're going to sign really, is he? So it does give you more information as to what you're going to do. And again, important player, that's a normal thing. Playing time in 2021, 20, 20, 2020, 2021. This is showing actually more information as to what type of play, type of game he's going to get. So you've got star player, regular starter, squad player, impact sub, fringe player, emergency backup. This is This is probably key in a lot of things. Because there are times when you just say that someone is an important player, but then you want to use him as a, an impact sub, for example. So you bring him on on 60 minutes or whatever it is that you need to bring him on. And he scores an hour hat trick in those 30 minutes that he's got left. But if I just say that he's an important player, if I'm not playing him at all, he will then be like, eh, what are you doing to me? I want out of the club. So it is good that you can actually redefine or show what you actually want the players to be doing then we got 20 when negotiating the players contract you can fine tune their pathway through changes to their contract you can alter their playing time with 12 descriptive statuses which indicate how much game time you're offering per season across the contract so this is the second season your third season because it jumps between it jumps from 2020 21 to 22 to 22 23 so obviously future prospect so he's a youngster ryan cassidy at first in 2021 20, he's going to be an impact sub i don't know why i'm struggling to say that and then in 22 23 he's going to be a regular starter so what you're hoping is that you've developed him enough for him to be a real player in your team real play is probably the wrong way for it but you know a regular starter as it puts there it it's that for me is, a, again, as I said about say, you know, putting these things in, it gives you the opportunity to say to the player, if they come moaning to you, this is what I said to you when we've done our contract, or how it actually works out in, in reality or in the game, maybe different to this, but at least you can say to them, I said you were going to be a regular starter in three years' time. At the moment, I said you were going to be my little super sub. So... If they moan to you and say, I want regular game time, and you said he's going to be a sub, they can't really moan, or I would hope they wouldn't moan. And hopefully, you know, it makes the interactions between you and the players a lot better in terms of, you know, you're not playing me. And normally you just click, ask the captain to sort it out, and the captain generally sorts it out. But when they don't, you know, just hell, all hell seems to break loose. This gives a way more definition to a player standing within the club from day one from day one of the, sorry from day one of them arriving either from another club or the academy you both know where you stand 
Through this mutual agreement stroke promise, this should go some way to alleviating potential issues with keeping the squad happy. Now you and your players know how much they'll play per season, from emergency backup to star player and everything in between. Again, I think that is key. And also, as I was just talking about the players who come moaning to you, it's very, very frequent in FM19. So if there's a way to stop all of those like niggling little news items and interactions, I'm all for it. it there's too much like finicky things that go on in FM19 at the moment. Goalkeepers have their own tailor playing times too and serve as a great example of how this feature comes to life. A young goalkeeper can go from emergency backup to cup goalkeeper to first choice across the length of their contract all the while planning how they how the other goalkeepers fit around this youngster's progression brilliant i mean you know for the cup games especially early on if you're a big team you go you are going to want to put your youth team in because you want game time for them ah again all for it the playing time pathway will also impact players you send out on loan you and the potential loan club will be able to negotiate in more detail just how they plan to use your youngster with a defined level of playing time. This will help you decide which destination will be the most suitable when weighing up multiple options. Again, another thing that I'm all for. I'm all about developing the youth players that I get in. Sometimes it's impossible for you to actually play them enough. So if you can say when on the loan, go for it. This is what I want them to do. You know, you're quitting. I think it's a really really good change and i can't complain about that one so yeah some good features that we've actually seen here mentioned and obviously these are the main features that they they've actually brought about however if we go to miles's um twitter what you can see here this one so the first twit poll feature roulette well, is closed 12843 so what he's doing is he's got He's got numbers against various things so for this one round two there was 3700 is player related then there's 18870 is social related 26229 staff related 25583 attention to detail so if you pick one of those things then he's going to tweet the specific thing about it and i don't think just refresh this He hasn't actually mentioned what it is yet. So it's going to be revealed at some point. So this one, that was the first one. It was um, 1243 wins as requested on our suggestions forums. New gens can now have more dy dynamic personalities that change over time depending on more circumstances in the game. So that for me, again, is another good thing. Just purely because some of your new gens that you get in are they are the most obstreperous person or whatever you want to call them in the world and you want to change them as much as possible and you you know you put them put them with the likes of know, jordan henderson or someone who's probably a model citizen or whatever he is and you want to, them to become the same as jordan henderson or another player whoever you want to pick jordan henderson was just the first name that came into my head so I think, as always, new gens and anything around them is really, really welcome in my eyes. And hopefully the next one that's going to be coming up, which at the moment the player related is winning. Hopefully it's going to be good. But yeah, check out at Miles SI and also at Football Manager for more information. And I will do a video probably of my team release or the team that I'm going to play in the beta, or beta, however you want to pronounce it. So yeah, that was a, as quick a rundown as possible of the features that have been released and also what is going on at the moment. You know, keep your eyes on Twitter, have a look at Miles, see what he's saying. You will know more about what's new in the game and what we're going to expect come November 2nd-ish or whatever it is. Oh so, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.